that would. So we are rec we are recording this, um, and thank you all for joining us for the second of two, uh, turning our our clothes into a force for good brainstorms. And this, um, I think, will be having been through uh, been a part of the first one. I think this will be a unique and engaging uh, brainstorm. Looking forward to hearing your ideas, and it and it mixes all manner of kind of uh, there's sports psychology involved and it I, I won't uh, preamble it anymore but I, I'm really looking forward to it so because we have a lot to do um, I am going to just start off the round of, of brief introductions so we can all know who are who is here um, so you know me I'm Lou Blaustein founder um, and CEO of Eco Athletes, and now I'm going to hand it over to Scott to say a couple of words. Thanks, Lou, and welcome everybody. My name is Scott Welch. I'm executive director of the Loop Foundation, and our goal is to make clothing a force for good. And we're super excited to be with all of you and get your ideas today. So, welcome and good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. And Looped is a partner with Eco Athletes on this whole project. Um, Oliver. Hi everybody, I'm Oliver. Uh, I'm a marketing assistant at the Loop Foundation and I'm helping Scott with a bunch of things, including this project. Awesome. And now um, I'm gonna hand it over to our facilitator for today, Daniela, for a quick in introduction. Yeah, good morning. My name is Daniela. Um, I'm in Portland. I've been a apparel designer in the in the athletic apparel industry, actually, for um, for ten years, ten years independent, and became uh, through life a facilitator, a breathwork facilitator, coach, and um, went three hundred and sixty, um, launching a clean and conscious clothing line. And we are really fortunate to have Daniela to take us through this program today. So thank you so much. Now to our Eco athletes, champions, and friends. Um, I am going to go to Jackie Pieri. Hi, guys. I'm Jackie Pieri. Um, I'm an ice hockey player, originally from the States, but I live in Italy now. And also a blogger of note. We'll maybe we'll mm. touch into that later. Okay, <laughs> now I'm going to go to Rian. Hi, uh, sorry, I'm in the car, so I'm just going to keep my camera off, but uh, I'm Rian Murphy. I am a Texas A&M athlete on the equestrian team um, and a part of a sustainable organization that I helped co-found there. Awesome, and welcome to the Brainstorm and welcome to the Eco Athletes Champions roster. And now I'm going to, staying with the Texas A&M uh, focus, I'm going to go to Haley. All right, welcome to the Aggies. Now, next is going to be Melissa Callison. Hey, sailor. Oh, there we go. Hi, um, Melissa Callison. I'm a sailor and founder of Oceana Vela. Also an environmental sustainability professional. Um, so Oceana and Vela, and um, the reason why I'm interested in, in this brand's brainstorm is because Oceana and Vela is actually uh, a company that I started to repurpose really famous race sales. So really high tech um, materials, different materials, and um, we're making gear, uh, bags, accessories, whatnot, and uh, it's kind of my goal to see what what else we can what else we can create with all this great material that's out there that gets wasted, and see what we can get into the supply chain. Awesome, and Melissa is uh, lives on her boat, so that is uh, where we see her right now, somewhere off the coast of Maine, I believe. <laughs> no, um, still in Northeast Harbor. <laughs> still in Northeast Harbor, Maine. Uh, um, and next, we are going to go to Inya. Hi, everyone. I'm Inya. I'm from Slovenia, and I go to NC State 
where I play golf. And uh, as part of uh, a growing sustainability, sports sustainability movement in the Atlantic Coast Conference, I might add. Um, yes. Now we're gonna go to Megan. Hi everyone, um, I'm Megan Galvin. Um, I'm a well, former lacrosse player at Christopher Newport University in Virginia. Um, I'm currently in Arlington, Virginia, in the midst of a career transition to a sustainable area, looking at a couple like business options that I'm looking at, but uh, also volunteer with Eco Athletes. Love the mission, love what we're doing. Really excited to be a part of the conversation today. Thanks for having me. Fantastic. Um, and now I'm going to go to Tanya in Germany. Yeah. Hi, my name is Tanya. Um, I'm from Germany, but currently in uh, the Netherlands. Oh, okay. I, I <laughs> in my uh, camper van. <laughs> but um, yeah, I uh, I'm a standard peddler, and uh, I have my own company, um, providing also gear for standard peddling. And I'm also involved into the organization of uh, yeah, different events. Um, so that's also why I'm interested now in, in the clothing part, because of course we also need uh, t-shirts, et cetera, for events. Awesome. All right, now we just have joining us uh, in the last couple of minutes, I'm gonna go to Katie. Hi everybody. Yeah, 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 I can, I can talk. I just, um, I'm kind of on the move right now, so I can't have my camera on. But um, I am a super player at NYU. Um, I also help with social media for Eco Athletes, which has been a really, really cool experience so far. Um, to yeah. continue to do that, and also to, to be a part of this conversation today. And and and. Thanks to Katie for her help on social media. She is our first dual threat champion in that she is a champion and um, part, of the, part of the team. And then last but definitely not least, we have Phil Marquis or Philippe, but we'll say Phil. Um, I'm not, are you in Colorado now or somewhere else? Hi, Lou. Hi, everyone. Um, I, I've been on the move lately. I am back in Canada, so I'm freestyle skier, and I uh, just switched job, and now I'm working with uh, Freestyle Canada, so back in in my homeland, um, working with the team, the program I work, uh, I grew into, and joined Eco Athletes um, back in um, April, I would say, officially, um, so kind of still new to this group uh, and all of this, so I'm joining in a little late, just woke up. <laughs> um, so, like so happy, happy to be uh, to be with you guys uh, this morning, this afternoon, or wherever you are. And just to note, Phil um, is was an Olympian in free skiing in uh, Pyeongchang 2018. Suffered an, I believe, an ACL tear right before the Olympics, and competed and made it to the finals. I just had to say that. <laughs> so, all right. Um, on So, okay. So I am going to just uh, do a brief introduction of what we're going to see as, or set the scene, and then we will get into it. So for this, I'm going to share my screen um, and hopefully this works. Okay. So let me get to the... Uh, slideshow. Here it is. Okay. Um, so just to note, this is actually a follow up from our, uh, uh, an initial uh, eco athletes conversation um, back a couple months, where we were setting up the the idea of turning our clothes into a force for good. And uh, the, the keynote speaker at that event was uh, an author by the name of Maxine Beda, pictured here. And she wrote the book, Unraveled, uh, The Life and Death of a Garment, which is a great read about the environmental and social costs of the apparel industry. I uh, highly urge it, uh, you guys to get a copy and read it if you can. 
Um, and so she basically gave a state of the fashion world from an environmental perspective 101. And, you know, her message distilled down to its essence is to, you know, we really to reduce carbon emissions, we need to buy clothing less frequently and extend the life of our clothing. Those two are intimately related and then do some research and choose the climate responsible option when we do buy. She also wove in, pun intended, the um, kind of the connection between environmental, uh, the environmental costs of the uh, apparel industry and the social costs of the apparel industry, especially as it relates to uh, uh, women um, over, over many over decades, if not centuries. Um, and so that was where we were last time. And so from that, you know, and from the comments came the idea, hey, let, let's, you know, it's one thing to have an, a, a, a conversation, but we want to turn, you know, uh, talk into action as per our Earth Month um, uh, community chat. And so we, uh, some of the attendees and we decided to say, let's have a brainstorm where we can figure out, are there individual actions that champions can take? And how about collective action? And what would those look like? And then hopefully what we will do is then start taking those collective and individual athletes. So that's the setup. And now I'm going to hand it over to Scott. Thanks, Lou, and great introduction. Um, I think really what, what we wanna do at this meeting today is we wanna sort of replicate the feeling that some of us had during Maxine's presentation and looking at also thanking Lou Barnes, who was one of the hosts of the event, um, thinking about Lou and Maxine both, neither of them were, were super knowledgeable about the textile impact or the textile world until they sort of fell into it. Once they gained that awareness, they decided to take action and together they've both done actions that can change the world. So what we wanna to do today is get all of us together and think about what could we do to help make clothing a force for good. Um, we're not asking you guys to think of specific campaigns. We can definitely help with that. Um, we're looking at topics and ideas that we can build into campaigns, um, both looking at something that we could do collectively to take advantage of our combined social media reach um, to build that awareness but then also what could we do individually? Um, so Lou, go ahead and flash forward on the slides if you can. Yeah, I was having some technical difficulties beyond my control. So no now, worries. So I'm gonna stay out of the slideshow mode. It wouldn't let Lou, me advance. We can adapt and overcome. Um, this first slide here is really just for you all to think about maybe where you might fit if you want, want to do an individual or part of the collective campaign um, or both. And just a little idea also as a thought starter of what does the world need in this space? What are you passionate about and how you like to communicate? Consider that we have 8 billion people in the world. We have to wear clothes, so it's a must. Um, but if we can do this better and make clothes a force for good, it can be a pretty strong weapon against climate change. Um, moving forward, if you think about what could we do together there have been some very strong collective campaigns in the past. Um, the campaign, Who Made My Clothes? You may have seen it over the past decade. It started after a tragic situation at Rana Plaza in Bangladesh where there was a, a cut and sew factory that collapsed, but it also was very important in bringing awareness to actually who makes our, who makes our clothes and what type of life are they leading and what are the impacts to them? I think most of us don't really consider who make our clothes when we select our clothes from our closet or our drawers every day. Um, so this is an example of how you can do that. It was started by two women. It ended up being um, across the world in over a hundred countries, 900,000 posts and is still being used today. Secondly, um, you all have great influence in your local communities um, or even in your countries or regions. And oftentimes you also have partnerships with other organizations. So how could we utilize those to help share this awareness to more people? Um, one way we've done it here in the Pacific Northwest is we worked with CJ McCollum, former Portland Trailblazer and current New Orleans Pelican in the NBA 
to build a curriculum utilizing clothes to introduce sustainability to kids. Um, in most cases, sustainability to kids is an idea sort of like Santa Claus. Um, it's not thought of very often or well understood, but when you can introduce it through clothing, which is very important to young people, you can actually get those points across and get them to think about it in a new way. Our perfect setup. And um, let's see, I know you're seeing all of this in back end stuff. <laughs> I am going now to uh, hand it over to uh, Daniela to set up the uh, brainstorm and also some background. Beautiful, thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> so there are some very interesting stats that might be shocking about the apparel industry. Um, and you can leave that up because um, this is the one, this is the thing that gives me hope. Like the 20th, this, this quote by Tom Bujek, the 20th century was all about getting you to love the things we make. And the 21st century is all about how to make the things you love. This is a quote that really gives me hope and a vision. Um, because, and I, I think now we can take that down. Okay. Thank and we you. will stop mm -hmm. sharing. Yes, so that I can have my, my information here. Um, because the stats of the industry are, um, are, are kind of mind blowing, right? Because at the moment, um, every year, the industry uh, creates between 80 and 150 billion items of clothes each, each year. Um, the average American purchase over 60 garments a year, 64% of the clothes overall are never worn and 82% of clothes end up in a landfill. That is two garbage trucks of textile waste every second. And we are throwing $450 billion worth away every year. Um, the other thing that um, was very curious to me is that over the last 20 years, our global consumption quadrupled, grew by 400%. And it made me very, very curious because even though we know about sustainability over the last 10 years, it's became more and more known uh, and the ethical impacts on people, um, as Scott said about Rana Plaza, so what is happening here that is, what is happening underneath within, within us as a human society that, it, that this obscene consumption is a symptom of? And um, which, is, um, which is part of, let me just put this down, which is part of why I was really interested in, at looking at human growth and human adaptability and what is happening underneath. Um, and, and I'm super excited about you all being here because I believe that um, there is like a pain or a discomfort or a hole or a void within humans that we are filling with stuff. And we're trying to make ourselves feel better. And we, we buy because we are being told that that makes us happy or fulfilled. And it isn't. And what I think is so extremely powerful about this group is that you as athletes, you know how to be in discomfort. You know how you are in um, in the repeated, like in the repeating things over and over again, um, and to overcome something. And I think that is a superpower that most humans don't have access to. And so it's very inspiring. That's why I believe it's so inspiring to see you perform and see you as athletes. And so I'm very curious about this energy, right? The energy that you even feel or tap into when you are performing. And I don't know if this is true and you can just give me a wave, but there might be a point where you are in the flow so much, like where you know that you're going to win, 
where there is like just a knowing coming in. And this is this energy that I want to um, bring us all into for this brainstorm today so that we can connect with something that is much bigger than us, that we are getting out of our heads of figuring out what the solution might be here. So that we are out of our heads, out of the ego, but tapping into flow. Um, because um, Einstein already said, right, like years and years ago, uh, we ca cannot solve a problem at the same level of consciousness that created it. And so I'm super excited uh, to uh, play with you today uh, that we're going into some levels of consciousness uh, outside of our structured mind into like open and expanded awareness. And so what we're going to use today is, um, is the power of, of breath work to, to get us there. And we're going to use um, what's called the halo active breath, which is a very simple breath. It is in through the nose, out through the mouth, and you can try this out. And it's, it's a conscious breath, right? So it looks like this. And you just continue with that breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. And we'll do that with music as well. So before we go into this, I want to just uh, prepare you a little bit about what you might experience in your body while you do that. So you might feel tingling sensations. You might feel some lightheadedness. You might feel very cold. You might feel heat. You might feel pressure somewhere. Um, how I explain or believe that um, breathwork is so powerful is because um, and what could happen is like you could feel some emotions as well. And that's okay. Um, the way I see breathwork work is as humans, we're suppressing our emotions all the time from very early on. And uh, it's, it's energy, uh, emotions are energy in motion and they get stuck in the body and then they just there. So we are running around with this emotional sandwich and what breath work does just with the conscious breath, it goes in there, it loosens up those, those emotions and starts um, loosening them up. And so they come out. So you might have tears, you might laugh, you might get really angry or frustrated. No, all of this is okay. All of this is okay. Um, and welcome, actually, uh, in, in the breath or throughout, throughout the breath. Um, um, do you have any questions up so far? No? Okay. Are you excited about trying this? Awesome. So um, we'll do two songs. Um, we'll go a little bit deeper today. I will give you th some, um, you know, some, it's a guided meditation. And, um, and, and then I'll, Pull, bring you out of that and there is a, another song coming and um, I invite you just to journal so there, there there might be like images coming up for you there might be emotions coming up from for you there might be uh, colors words connections and you know coming out of this experience I'd like to you to just journal whatever it is just letting it flow out you know from that state in which you are without editing without just blocking any of that through the mind and then we come back and we share and um there is as with the breath you can only do this right same with the shares every share is welcome no share is stupid or any or, or not worthy. Everything is worth sharing because it will spark something else. And then we create like we, that's how we create movement. That's how we keep in the flow and keep the energy flowing. So thank you so, so much for being here and for playing all out. All right. So if you are in a safe place. So if you're in a car, just maybe you don't participate in this part um, because I will invite you to close your eyes and just really come into, into, your, into your place here. Um, Lou, you, um, let me see if I can 
Would you please uh, make me co-host so that I can share my uh, computer audio? To ask about that prior. No, okay, perfect. Thank you. Got it. All right, just making sure you all hear. Just hear the sound. You can hear the sound? Okay, perfect. Okay. All right, I'm going to start this over. So I invite you to uh, close your eyes here and just settle into the space, bringing all your awareness from all the places that your awareness has been so far today and bring all your awareness into your own body. Bring it down to the wide parts in between your hips. We notice the surface beneath you. And travel your awareness down into your legs, feet, and into the earth. Now bring your awareness out to the edges of the room or the car, the van you are in. Beautiful. Opening yourself up to receptivity. Beautiful. Beautiful. And then let's take three deep inhales and exhales in through the nose. Out to the mouth. Beautiful. Two more times in through the nose. And out of the mouth. <sighs> That's it. Beautiful. One more time in through the nose. And then out through the mouth. <sighs> That's it. And then continue with a halo active breath, finding your own rhythm in through the nose out through the mouth. That's it. Really creating flow in your system. And now, imagine floating in the ocean. And you notice there's a wave coming. It's already forming. It's a movement that will change everything. And you, you're at the forefront. And you can feel it coming. Beautiful inhales and exhales. That's it. Beautiful. Yes, and move your head, move your body, just listen. Trust it. Now you are noticing the wave building up. You've been waiting for this.
Here it is. Here it is. Do you notice there's so many others? You're not alone. So many others. You're not alone. You're writing it. Yes. <sighs> yeah. Yes, that's it. You got it. Beautiful. <sighs> that is it. Just notice the sensations in your body. Images, color, sounds. Beautiful. For the next two minutes, just stay in that space with your eyes closed. If you feel ready, I invite you to gently, gently flutter your eyes open. And take the time to just jot down whatever feelings, sensations, images, ideas, Whatever is coming through, just put pen to paper. Thank you.
want to have a little bit more or do you feel complete all right beautiful thank you welcome rob thank you sorry i'm so late but what a um, pleasure to come into the middle of that <laughs> awesome thank you yeah, so I'll, I, I invite all of you just to share whatever came up without having to figure out an answer or context, just like letting that flow and I will just watch and be witness to the magic. Who would like to go first? Megan? I can go first. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Sure. Um, usually for me, whenever I do a meditation session, that's usually when it's me granting access for like all that anxiety of the week to just like hover in my lower stomach. So it's like getting through that. And then uh -huh. I, I love the deep breathing stuff. I, it's a good reminder. I need to do that stuff more. <laughs> <laughs> Because it, it does center you in a way and um yeah. but it, it's kind of that feeling of you always like we always need to be somewhere else we have some like i got something else to do and like the more silence there is it can all, almost like make it louder it's like nope you got like you got this list of stuff to do later and we got all these problems how are you gonna solve it i don't know but <laughs> But that's one of those things that came to mind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so did you, I'm curious, did you feel like you were able to get into a centered space in that short amount of time? I did. Um, like probably after, it usually takes a bit because I'm a fidgety person. <laughs> um, yeah. Like oh, I I'm always sh like shifting that chair. Um, yes. But once we got to the ocean, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, weird. I haven't been able to like conjure like an image like yeah, I had okay. just then in a while. So mm -hmm. that, was, that was nice. Awesome. Nice moment of Thank peace. you. And you are definitely speaking about what. Oh, you know, all humans probably experience this like a uh, fidgety once it's quiet, mm -hmm. which is like we want to numb, and so we buy <laughs> something outside. We find something too. <laughs> exactly. Thank you so much. Thank you. Awesome. I, um, I, because this is the, I did the Tuesday night, and this was completely different. Mm -hmm. for me like mm -hmm. 180 different mm. um I, I think i was able to clear my head better at the beginning but that in the end led to this wave of sadness mm -hmm. before we got even into the ocean i felt mm. a wave of sadness and yeah in my eyes and in my face and mm. my mom passed two months ago and it was into that and then some, you know, overall kind of like, I don't know if it's climate sadness, but it was all in that. Yeah. And then when you got to the ocean part, I literally imaged, imagined myself not like riding a wave towards the shore, but almost like parallel mm. and kind of going with it. And then the sadness lifted. Mm. And then I felt like, the lift of the eco athletes champions i know this sounds really hokey but i'm like the team and, oh yeah and and just to add there was trash in the ocean mm -hmm. and like i was thinking of our uh eco athlete cha champion marilla the mermaid who does mermaid swims and picks trash out mm -hmm. um and i was like 
we like, I, I felt this power. Mm-hmm. I didn't know where it was going. And, and that was it. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. And so, um, you know, vulnerable as well. And it, there's so much power when we are with the pain and the sadness. Like when we allow that. And, and in these couple months, I haven't enough or, uh, but this was, it was pretty much, it was heavy, but I'm glad I went through it. So thank you. Yeah. Sorry about your mom. I'd love to share my experience as well. Yeah, Sinia. So at first, um, I'm a, I think a lot. So I tried to find mm-hmm. new ideas. And at first my brain was going all different places to mm-hmm. how could we help environment? What is going on in my life? What is going on in the world? And then after a while and after we got to the ocean part, I finally were, was able to calm down and stop thinking about everything and just chill and relax and really get all by just me and no thoughts Beautiful. so that was great because it's really at least for me it's hard to get to that state mm-hmm. yeah you're not alone thank you mm-hmm. thank you melissa so i as well did um, this on Tuesday and um, similar I was I was actually thinking about it this morning thinking is it gonna be different <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and it was a little bit so I started out on the ocean on uh, like an inflatable raft and I was like no no I won't be able to surf surf the wave on a raft <laughs> so this has to be a surfboard but it so I went back and forth um, and then the wave came and I started serving, but this time I wasn't alone. Mm. Everybody else was there. So mm. like doing their sport, surfing the wave, like on skis, Lou was surfing, Lou was up and surfing and tangling <laughs> on his surfboard. <laughs> um, yeah, so this time, like I, I actually, didn't feel the sadness today whereas um on Tuesday I you know started thinking about marine debris and all the trash and getting you know bombarded with, with the wave of, of plastic in the ocean and got really sad so that I had both emotions on Tuesday but today I was just like no we can do this all together mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um and then I, I like I'm writing things down like the first thing I thought was just buy less uh, live simply, be happy. And then I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> These are all slogans from life is good, isn't it? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. So I think, yeah. Awesome. I like yeah. the idea of a collective marketing campaign to to overcome mm-hmm. the, the bad marketing to buy more. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. How, how do we get to get to happy? How do we get to get to fulfilled? So I did it also for a second time, Daniela, mm-hmm. and I sort of got to happy this time because mm. I also, I kind of followed um, what was just explained. You know, the first time you do it, you're sort of over- overwhelmed by the problem. And then you, you sort of slide toward a solution, but you may not get there initially because it's a quick process. So maybe mm-hmm. have, doing it twice allows you to have a longer process where you might get to the happy place quicker. And as I thought about that, I started thinking this clash between local and global that we have all these local issues, but it's a truly a global issue. Again, that we have this diversity, not only with us, but in the globe to solve the problem um, and help us. But then I started thinking, sort of historically, when we went to the ocean, I sort of went back in time and I started thinking about just people in general and actually sustainability is part of humans' inherent values. If you think about First Nations of anywhere in the world, they didn't waste resources because you couldn't survive if you wasted resources. We've only come to a point in time where we became unsustainable probably in the last 50 years. And so 
we're not really fighting this huge challenge. We're fighting our most recent behavior. And how do we get back to our human values, which truly are sustainable? And that gave me hope. And also when you think about marketing, how do we then do that and bring us back to where we came from? We're not trying to shift behavior. We're trying to return our behavior. So that mm. was sort of hopeful. That's amazing. Yeah, so true. And the change is already happening. Like we we are in we are being battered right now. Feels like so many. We are in the perfect storm, right? So many things that happen one over the other that is getting us to a point where we'll have to change. Thank you. Melissa, do you want to share? Um, yeah, I um, I was struck by how um, normally when we use images of waves um, in climate, it's sometimes about like the wave approaching us and we're on the beach and the breath is coming and it's kind of growing and, and coming towards us. And I found it so powerful that you kind of flipped that so that um, we were part of the wave and the wave was growing and that was a good thing. <laughs> and um, rather than us standing isolated and, and kind of frozen on the beach with something approaching us, the idea that momentum was gathering and that there were other people. I think it's the first time in this work that I've thought about. It's like, oh, right. Yeah, actually, I wouldn't need to be here because the waves moving there are other people here and I can I can join it if I want to but it doesn't have to just be me bracing myself for the wave to hit it's there's loads of us here and I loved Melissa your analogy about or your your vision about everybody's on their surfboard and they're, they're riding this and there's something it was just this image of immense hope and um and I've I think I was moved, like, I almost felt upset, but I think actually I was moved by the, it's a, it's a really beautiful image. Um, and yeah, just so powerful that, that um, we could act as though, um, I think there's truth to what, what, to the image. And also it does no harm for us to act as though we're surfing a wave that is going to make it and it is going to build and it is going to be enough um, and that we can get carried with that and, and it be this natural power rather than feeling like we're always fighting and confronting something. Um, yeah, so thank you yeah. so much. Yeah, thank just, you, yeah. I just wanna interject that um, Melissa uh, is uh, an Eco Athletes champion uh, rower for Team GB and a true leader, um, even beyond the eco athletes world in the uh, sports and climate space. And we are lucky that she's to have her as part of our team. Amazing. Who else wants to share? <clears throat> Jackie jump in just quickly um uh, I first I just want to say I'm like totally inspired and in awe of how creative everyone's um reaction was to this meditation that was really cool Melissa's imagery and then the two Melissa's imagery and just everyone's experience with that um I didn't really get to a place of uh calm during this meditation I, I try to meditate a lot but like everyone I'm not so good at it <laughs> Um, and I was really struck by uh, the last Melissa's um, note of like the wave and maybe it will be enough because the first thing I wrote down in, in my free write was this feeling of not being enough and this feeling of our impact being too small. And, um, you know, this uh, concept of like whether, I know this is kind of de depressing and negative, but whether that wave is, is really happening or whether we're in like a little echo chamber of climate activists and you know the rest of the world is still consuming more and more and more and then we have this like you know tight-knit group of conscious people trying to consume less and um my thoughts also went to how to impact a problem that on some level 
maybe isn't so relatable because I think a lot of us personally have found a way to reduce our consumption and have found a way to maybe buy less clothes. Like I know I personally am like really not stylish and I really don't buy a lot of clothes, but I know like a lot of my peers really care about shopping and a lot of my peers like really buy a lot of stuff that they don't ever even wear. And um, I was in H&M last week and, you know, they have like a, a clothing recycling program. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, this is the center of fast fashion. That's such greenwashing. What impact are we really having? And um, yeah, so I had a bit of like a negative thought mm -hmm. spiral with it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that makes sense too, right? To, to have that. And it only takes, I think, 10% of the population. I mean, that research has shown only 10% will make a difference. Cool. With, with you know, for, for systemic change, it only needs 10%. And that, that is hopeful because I think we are getting there. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, who else wants yeah. to? Um, I hi, honestly, hi. <laughs> honestly, I I got uh, super calmed down, so I am I almost fell asleep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it can be that I have a little bit lack of uh, sleep from the last um weekends. Mm -hmm. Um, jumping on that wave. I mean, uh, me as a, a center peddler um can say there is no better feeling than catching a wave be on the wave and like a, a party wave so with a lot of people on a wave together so i really like that image and um i think that is also a good image to to yeah tell the story or get more people also involved um mm -hmm. yeah i yeah. i like that thank you one more interjection i just, um you know, we scheduled this for an hour and we're having great conversation. We can, I can stay on for, you know, good 15 more minutes. We're about five minutes from the hour. If you have to get off, I, you know, just want to give you, obviously you have that agency and that uh, you can do what you got to do. If you want to stay on, please, please do. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for keeping uh, an eye on time. <laughs> um, if you do need to leave, just know that we will get back to you. We're going to combine the thoughts from both of these meetings and have a third meeting to really put them into action. Who, who would like to go next? Rob, Phil? I'll go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I, I joined it, um, only halfway through, so I missed the start of the meditation. But I think for me, I dropped straight into a place of very calm and, and <laughs> a lot of happiness awesome. i used to surf a lot not so much these days but i definitely relate to what tanya was saying about a party wave and for me there was a real sense of just simplicity um and i think coming back to what jackie what you were saying a minute ago like can we actually make change um i think it takes it doesn't take a lot of people to start making genuine change i i run a clothing company so i'm in a kind of slight juxtaposition we're trying to sell stuff when the world doesn't need more stuff we're trying to sell stuff that's an awful lot better than you know the average but i think actually the the coming back to it's been mentioned a few times but um the point around um we need less we don't we don't need much to be happy um and actually what we already have is is perfectly good in a lot of cases so i think from a brand's point of view what we're trying to do is encourage people to repair and encourage people to buy once buy well and and, and really cherish what they have and i think there's um yeah a lot of marketing out there is just about churn and, and box shifting but i think if that can be flipped on its head to cherish what you have look after it and now might be a great time to do it because certainly in the uk and europe we've got this cost of living crisis which is pretty rampant right now and affecting a lot of people and there's people out there saying i can't afford to buy you know quote unquote sustainable clothing i can barely afford to buy stuff at h&m at, at or primark and that's fine i think you know buy what you can afford and then just really look after it so um yeah i had this real sense of simplicity and 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 happiness being in the ocean because that's certainly my happy place mm -hmm. thank you thank you and 
thank you for offering uh, a better option, you know. Mm. Thank Phil, you, ha Haley, yeah. for writing in. Haley. Yeah, I can jump in. Oh, um, Haley wrote, wrote in. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Phil, go ahead. Yeah, I think I, um, where I was was more like Jackie. So I think I was definitely spinning. Um, again, practice that I don't do it far enough. Um, and just like, yeah, spinning a lot at the beginning, trying to come myself. And I think towards the end, yeah, definitely a bit more sense of calmness and and peace and relaxation and, and just having just waking up, that was kind of a great way to, to settle in my day. And uh, yeah, but, but yeah, I think it just I need more practice on my end. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Is there a dog or something in your background? I heard... No. There's a coffee machine. Oh, it's a coffee machine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, I, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. So, Haley wrote, I love your points, Rob and Jackie. I felt myself feeling the same that it is difficult to make change and create something effective. <clears throat> I was using the meditation to calm my thoughts and get back to simplicity, as Rob mentioned. Yeah. So, it's back to a simpler life. Right. So where things were easier, which I think that there's a lot of that going on and in, in the world and politics <laughs> as well. Um, Katie, have you shared? It's Katie and- No, I have not shared. <clears throat> I can share now though. <clears throat> Do you like, okay, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, um, I kind of took it as, um, more positive and, and good. And I kind of, I liked the idea that in the ocean, at first I was kind of picturing by myself. Um, and then once you mentioned that everyone was there, I could kind of feel that and see that. And I like the, the metaphor that's there because whatever the wave is, if it's a problem or if it's an opportunity, um, you're not alone in it and you have your community, um, which I thought was, was really cool. And I, and I liked the the whole experience of it mm, beautiful yeah what you said just like it's there is always an opportunity in each problem or we just look at it as an opportunity beautiful um luke i i don't know did you catch the wave <laughs> maybe not he wasn't there early right early right he came in late okay yeah he's okay. saying uh okay. he texted that he can't speak right now i mean no, not okay he, uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. you okay. know what i'm saying yes 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 got it got it totally um, makes sense yes so thank you everyone for for sharing um um for like that that hope that Melissa both Melissa's were talking about like the hope and not being alone um Jackie the enough is it enough I think this is the big big question right like it's it's for all humans we all are in this illusion that we are not enough which to be honest I believe is the is the root cause for consumption because as long, unless we feel enough, we will consume and try to fill that not enoughness with something externally, because up until now, um, commerce has told us that we will feel better, that we are someone that we be enough when we have that thing or those clothes. And so this idea of, the 20th century was all about making making you love what we produce and flipping that into the 21st century is all about you making the things that we love is therefore so powerful. So it, for me, for me personally, where I have arrived, I, I, I'd like to share is 
there's only two things to do on, on an individual level is one is to only buy what we love. So going from a place of love and joy and beauty and buying those things because we don't throw away things we love, do we? We only throw away things we don't care about. And then the second is to, to get curious about that, that, that not enoughness and being able to sit with that and be curious about that and be, um, you know, be with the antsiness without going out and numbing it, without going out and strolling it, uh, scrolling screens and purchasing something on an impulse just because it makes us feel better for a second. And I, I am so still practicing that, and, you know, I'm human. And, but this is where, where I have come to, you know, like what is the point where we can be with the discomfort? What is the point where I can be with the discomfort and just be with that? Because what Lou has exp- shown so well is to be just with that sadness. And once you are with, and once you meet it, then it can turn into something else. Then it just, you know, integrates. And, and, um, and normally when we're sad, retail therapy is real, right? We, we all know that. Um, so yeah, so this is, this is what my, my, my work definitely is about helping people to get to center and feel the enough. And, and I know that you as athletes, you have been, you can be with discomfort you can be, you know, with the monotony of like doing something over and over and over and over and practicing it again. And that's why I absolutely believe that this group is that wave that can and will inspire and empower others to step into that, onto that path. So thank you so, so much. Thank you, Daniela, for not one, but two really (laughs) insightful and eye-opening, even when our eyes were closed, Mm -hmm. sessions. Um, You know, and and thank uh, Scott and Oliver Mm -hmm. from Looped and, of course, all of the champions and our friends. Um, So, you know, how do we turn this into these um, insights that we have developed in the last two sessions that have come to the fore. Um, you know, I, I think there are, are, there are two ways that I see it. Um, and first I'm gonna say one other, I don't know if it's an insight, but one other observation that I made the last time that even was more intense this time, which is that, you know, there's, I, 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 I see a, a, like an X, Y axis on the Y axis is stuff, wanting stuff, being told we need stuff, being pushed stuff, and we get way up there. And then, and the horizontal axis is experiences and, the, you know, and sports and athletes deliver experiences, deliver memories, deliver aha moments. Can you believe that? That's what athletes do. Now, also we're told, yeah, hey, you got to buy that jersey. And so it's like, it's not a full, you know, either or thing by any stretch. And so I just have here uh, my 2004 Jonathan Vilma, New York Jets jersey. Um, because I decided that I'm not buying any more jerseys, even though they keep telling me I got to buy more jerseys. And I don't know that that's a solution, but I just had to show that. Anyway, um, I think in terms of actions, and Scott, you can you know, kind of riff off of this. Um, we're going to huddle and, and kind of from these sessions come up with a recommendation or two for a potential collective action or series of actions. And we'll come back to you guys 
the attendees and the larger eco athletes family. And for those who are interested, we will welcome you to be a part of this wave. Um, and then if any of you are uh, interested in, you know, through your sport, through, uh, you know, if you're at a university, um, through student athletes groups, I, I'm thinking of Texas a and I'm thinking of NYU, I'm thinking of NC State represented here. Um, um, you know, we can also talk separately about that. Um, but I think the one thing that also came to me is that, especially when Jackie was talking and, you know, or when I'm thinking of the weight of this all, is, you know, not saying we're all going to be or that we're going to be, um, you know, uh, Greta Thunberg, um, but she's one person who started, who changed everything. And I think with these athletes, with, with, with our champions, you know, it might not be Greta's impact, but who, you know, we can, we can be part of that wave. So I invite you guys to continue to join us as we move forward to doing stuff that is tangible. Scott, any, anything else? Oops, you're muted. Great job, Lou. I, I would just sort of actually just rip on what Daniela said, where if it takes 10% for systemic change, what's great about this amazing Uh oh, he froze. Or did I freeze? In a really relevant way and through a really relevant um, group that they're going to pay attention to. And so that gives me a lot of excitement. Um, it's inspiring to be with all of you. And just thank you for your time. And thanks for caring about this. Ditto, I think my internet is not great right now. So uh, we did get a, uh, can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, we got from Luke Smith, who was an unable to speak um, and he had to, he had to run. Um, he is a, a champion from Australia who's a volleyballer in the Czech Republic. Um, I'm going to read his comment. If, can you guys hear me? Oops. I think I'm, 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 I'm lost. Sorry. I can't, you guys can't hear me. We're having a problem. Sorry. Ah. I don't know. And from that point, we'll work with you on the actual work plan, on the content. Um, as you can see, working with CJ as an NBA athlete, we did that during the NBA season. So we were able to accomplish that and not really take a ton of his time, but still have him be a, a big part of it. Sorry, guys. Back. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys saw uh, Luke Smith had, a, had a, 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 an actually a substantive comment in the chats. Uh, in the chat, he's a volleyballer from Australia who's in the Czech Republic. Um, I'm just going to read it. He says he's heavily in interested in the wicked problem of fashion waste. I actually have a tiny solution I'd like to contribute to this brainstorm. As part of a university project, excuse me, I recently completed, I created a two-in-one solution to address fast fashion and single-use plastic bag waste a system that converts used t-shirts into shopping carry bags. I am optimistic solutions and innovations will get us out of this mess. So hoping individually and collectively, we can all contribute to the change we'd like to see. Thanks for taking the time, gang. Feel free to contact me if you're interested to find out more about my mock invention. Um, so I think Luke will be a contributor going forward. I feel confident awesome. in saying, not speaking for him, but so um so i'm sorry i jumped out i i fell out of there um but i'm guessing we are ready to uh to say goodbye um i 
can't thank you enough um, for your time, your in, your your insights, and your and your commitment. So um, I am really now be, now I'm feeling like I am on that wave. So um, thank you, Daniela, as well. So we will be back in touch with next steps. Um, have an awesome uh, weekend, and thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day, evening, <laughs> afternoon. Thanks, everyone. Right. You too. Thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> Daniela, thanks again for an amazing uh, hosting job. Thank you. I, you know, I love this breath work. I just do. I think that goes to gets people to enough you know are you feel enough how did you think this group was <clears throat> it, it was a different energy <clears throat> for sure um i think it's an amazing group altogether i think that there were more tangible things coming out of this last meeting i think um so oh, i I always like, you know, what feels really rich is that, um, uh, what's it called, swag. The swag idea is really rich. And then the other idea that I saw um, with this group is just somehow going back to the simple life, because really, truthfully, this is why, um, you know, people always like to have simple solutions to complex problems. And, you know, going back to a simple life, um, I think that's why the tiny home and the, uh, and the van life are so appealing. And um, I wonder if there's something there. I also think somehow with this whole enough or, or simple life or, or you know, there's there is something there um i do believe the combination of the the wave art chili um you know i think that there is something quite powerful in there um that's just what i feel from where where we've been in the last two days yeah and kind of playing on that i mean it's how do you because i think simple life is it's a positive theme, but it's also been sort of a negative theme in that mm -hmm. things are so simple now you you don't worry about wasting. You don't have to make things. Every every everything in our life has been made simpler. So we just simply care less about it because it doesn't take as much effort or time or thought right. to do it. So right. how do we bring that, like how do we return that whole simple life back to valuing our resources which was part right. of our values well maybe it's like more intentional life intentional living i, th I think you're right about simplicity i think it's uh -huh. people uh -huh. they may not see like the simple life really isn't simple if you think about living on the land or doing those things right, right. it actually takes yeah, more yeah, work yeah, like, yeah, 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 but yeah. you have less stress potentially and so how do you how do you for people who have never had a simple life but have that dream, how do we get them right. to live it in a sustainable way where it's attainable? True. Maybe it is more, I, I, I hear you, like that simple. Yeah. Yeah. Like I think about driving, for instance, I have an old 1980 mm -hmm. car and it doesn't have power steering or power brakes. And you actually feel it when you drive yes. and you have to drive it. You can't just sort of not pay attention. But new cars, they drive themselves. So exactly. new drivers are actually worse drivers because they never had to learn how to drive. They, have, they don't have to learn, right. I think it is, I, you know, uh, intentional life or conscious life, it is about consciousness. That's what I feel like. Yeah, this is with, with my, with the clothing line that I do. It's, you know, yes, the world doesn't need more clothes because there's so much already, but it's about the intention that goes into it. And it's not about just mass, 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 but um, which is, which is why I contacted Victor and saying, can we just do bioplastics that, you know, like we'll just engineer it so that it composts at the end. 
So it's not made for longevity because sustainability is all about this longevity. And um, that was, oh, th this was a different workshop or um, uh, where somebody brought that up. Like we're always thinking longevity, 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 but what if we are building it so that it isn't long? Because if we throw away things, like if mo more than half of it is thrown away anyway, and we can't change the entire world, you know, and entire population, we can impact like, you know, like the the ten percent, and that has a knock on effect. But maybe there is a way how we can engineer for the end in life and make sure that, you know, it compo composts. Anyway, these are just like these all these things that happened on my end. And I was like, okay, let's see who we can influence, where we can plant a seed for that. And that ten percent to me is really interesting because it's. You know, the motivation to change is going to be different for different people or the trigger. And so right. having these athletes that reach these different groups gives us the chance to inventory different triggers and figure out what are the triggers that we could use right. in campaigns that would get attention and mm -hmm. more than just one or two. And also understand are there regional triggers? Are there triggers for different generations, age groups, and genders, mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. all going to be key. So I think that's yeah. where these athletes, especially with their segmented groups, are super yeah. valuable. And, and yeah. uh, Melissa Wilson, who the uh, British Melissa, who uh, spoke so what eloquently, you know, she's connected to a group of, I think, about 70 Olympians from all over the mm. world. And wow. she created this thing called Athletes of the World with another of our champions. And so I definitely want, I, I, first of all, I think her ideas are good. And if we, you know, I, I hope that she would like to continue with this. Because- You got some serious Melissa power on your crew. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So and that those was are Melissa the only, Wilson, are, yeah? Melissa Wilson. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Melissa Callison's on the boat. Yes. And then yeah. Melissa Humana Paredes is the beach yeah. volleyballer from <laughs> Incredible Ladies. I know, like the Melissas. They, <laughs> yeah, we, have a, we have a Melissa. I, I think those are the only Melissas we have right now. Mm -hmm. um, they no, brought some. <laughs> they, they brought, brought some. <laughs> they brought it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think from the like, like when I hear the simple and um, it, the connotation for me isn't so positive. The intentional is positive. Intentional, yeah. Yeah, um, sim intentional progress. Like, because simpler to me means going back. And yeah, going back yeah. is not the, like, the good, right. as no, Obama we says, can't. the good old days ain't so good. <laughs> yes, that's um, true. And so that's how, but that's just the way my ear hears it. Um, and that's good. I Yeah, that's But really if good. you think about it from, so, I mean, this is a different, topic but i in portland they brought in a, an idea of community policing where the police were supposed to actually interact with the community and be more neighbors and there was initially kind of a fight from the police where they were like well why the hell are you telling us to do our job different who are you and so they ended up coming back to them and saying no that community policing is how police work has always been done if you look at historically mm -hmm. how did police do work when they were walking in the beat they knew the community da 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 mm -hmm. So they made it less threatening to the police here. And it wasn't like, hey, we're not trying to tell you to do something new. We're trying to tell you to get back to your roots and what made you successful. In some ways, that may be how we can pitch this. You know, it's not like we're asking humans to change their behavior. We're asking them to change their recent behavior and get back to what got them to this point. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's a, it, it is somewhat, uh, sorry, like no, no. this, it, there is uh, some slowing down, like just slowing down the <laughs> pace because we, yeah, I, I, I truly believe that like this, this uh, disjointed, this is kind of spiritual woo -woo stuff maybe, yeah, but <laughs> when we are like, when we are really aligned in, in our center, and if we if we are able to like calm ourselves down, then things outside will just sort itself out. But when we're trying to sort the things out in our life before we allow ourselves to get to center, we have it backwards. But that's how we are being told. My whole life I've been mm -hmm. told, you have to like I have to fix this. I have to push through. I have to just get this done and get this over with. And once I'm there, then I can focus 
on myself. And now I'm practicing, you know, like creating that calm and peace inside first, knowing that whatever the exterior stuff, it, it's going to sort itself out. And miraculously, it does. And it's like I'm always toggling, toggling. Then I'm getting into frantic mode. And I'm like, oh, remember, remember, go back. And then it sorts itself out and everything gets calm. And I think we are in this place where we are always trying to, we're, you know, like we're trying to fix. We're, that's what Melissa said. I'm, it's, I'm feeling isolated and this wave is coming towards me and I'm trying to hold it and fix it. Right. But like we can, we can approach it from the other way. So yeah, it is my spiritual, but I have seen evidence in my own life. So when do you guys think we can get back together and sort of synthesize these last two dates? Is there a date next week that works yes, for I all think, of y'all? Yep, I think next <coughs> week. And because I think, a, and a good goal would be like to come up with synthesize, communicate to the group that came and then communicate to those who didn't. Similarly, Absolutely. it'll be similar mm -hmm. messaging, but not exact. Um, right. My Would Wednesday work for you guys. I am. Let's see Wednesday. Yeah, because all I have is something at eight o'clock in the morning Eastern, which is you're not up. So I am wide open. Mm -hmm. yeah. Daniela, are you free on Wednesday? I am uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I am not. Okay. Monday is my only. Let's see what Monday yeah, looks like. Monday is think... super clear, super open at this point. I can do Monday. Um, I can do Monday before noon your time. I could do. Well, actually, I could. We could do. Well, that's, that's a noon. Sorry. Um, we could do a eight a.m. call, which is eleven a.m. here. Yeah, I don't know um, if that works for you, Danielle. It's a little difficult. Um, I with um, school drop off. How are you open at one on Monday, Blue? Your one time? my time yeah one my time which is 10 your time yes yeah that could work for it that works for me would that work for you danielle yes that will work all right okay, so I'll, I'll send out a note to everybody for that mm -hmm. or are you do you want to send out the zoom thing or do you want me to send it um yeah. i'll go ahead and do it since you did okay. the last one go ahead so 10 a.m on the 23rd perfect i'm in and then Daniela, let me know when I can take you to lunch and don't wait. Um, <laughs> you deserve, and you pick the spot too. So you definitely get something you like. I will yes. travel anywhere in the city to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Daniela, so tell I'm me when and tell me what. I'll think about something. <laughs> I wanted you. to say one more thing. Mm -hmm. I did, I changed things a little bit between the first, um, you know, um, breathing exercise in the second which was i took off my glasses mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when i closed my eyes yes. this time and it just mm -hmm. was a whole different sensation different. whoa i never thought about yeah. that interesting but like, completely different yeah that little thing yeah yeah i i know it, it, it will be is different all the time that one is uh, is for sure i'm actually in june i'm going to do a, a five-week course going through all five different breathing patterns. And then I'm, I'm launching something called the Breathfest Club for people <laughs> to just- <laughs> uh, Yeah, that's freaking awesome. Are you gonna yeah. have Ali Sheedy as- and, well, That's um, funny. Who knows? Uh, huh? Oliver's a big movie fan and we were talking about movies that he should potentially watch and add that one to the list, Oliver, Breakfast Club. Yeah, yeah, the breath, yeah. It's, it's so, something it's, we all watched as young people that kind of chronicled yep. our youth and it yeah, has yeah. a story about all these different kids and it sort of covers every kid at the high school yeah yeah these are the things that's that we, hilarious that's the culture stuff that we we have taught our daughter like all this old stuff um 16 candles all those old <laughs> yeah right it was just funny because i grew up in germany obviously and that was something that we watched like i watched that like you guys watch Breakfast times. Club in Germany? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, the most of the American movies were dubbed. Uh, uh, so, um, so, which kid did you relate to most in Breakfast Club? Uh, I don't know. I just like the rocker guy with the weird nostrils. <laughs> yeah, Emilio Estevez. Yeah, he was he was <laughs> the dude know. who I liked the most too. He, I, re yeah, I related to the nerd guy. 
<laughs> oh, the blonde guy. Andrew McCarthy was definitely me. <laughs> yeah. There's no it's question kind of, about it. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of funny, right? Because uh, if you think about like this whole makeover thing, how they made over that girl from the grungy. Yes. Where so this would be like cultural, very insensitive. That's <laughs> Ali. <days. laughs> that that's who Ali Sheedy played her. Yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah i had a thing for her <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> it's funny. what can i say that's so good that's so good yeah so in um, a very deep way mm -hmm. well this was uh <laughs> this was awesome you guys thanks so much um i think we were on to something and yep. the athletes mm -hmm. seem to be inspired and on board mm -hmm. and also just the huge breadth of athletes not only in sport but geography um yeah. age yeah that's amazing so yeah if there's also, like a yeah go ahead oh, Tanya, they do, uh, nc state's a school we really want to partner with because they have one of the top textile programs in the united states so mm -hmm. whoever well, is from in, nc state hook me up with them Inya, the golfer mm -hmm. who uh said that she couldn't stop her mind at the beginning mm -hmm. yeah um, and she also is connected through She's from Slovenia, which people don't think of. Yeah, Slovenia, golf. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, she's she's all that. And yeah. uh, her boyfriend, also from Slovenia, is doing an in internship with the Dallas Mavericks. Oh, sweet. Lucky him. Not only Perfect that, year. because Luka Doncic is from Slovenia. Her boyfriend is basically doing all of Luka's social media to all of Slovenia. Wow. And made them all Mavericks fans. How do we get Luca on board? Luca yeah. and Mark Cuban, who owns the Mavericks. Let's Ooh. get Luca on board. Um, so I'm working on that, but I will, if you wow. could just, Scott, if you want um, to, you know, write a blurb about what you're looking to do at NC State, like and a little bit about loop one two paragraphs max i'll write i'll send it over to Inya, and then um assuming she's open to talking to you which i'm sure she would be but i don't give people's information exactly. until mm -hmm. they until they say yes then i would make the connection um, yeah we'd want someone from them on our advisory committee honestly um and we also did um i i i there's a there's a big sports sustainability uh you know, kind of not big, but a, a actually small, but growing sports sustainability nexus, so to say, at NC State. Um, one of the uh, meteorology professors there is, is, is a leader in this field. And then there's um, a woman who I interviewed for my blog, uh, who's uh, researching why athletes who, who participate in non-traditional sports are more attuned to environment and climate or than mm. other things um and and yeah. uh, so she's also someone that's interesting in her story i'll send you the link to the story the interview i did with her wow. yeah i'd like to combine forces with all of them yeah so nc cool. State does have a lot going on um wow. awesome it's exciting yeah. yeah so um all right so scott you're gonna send the uh you're gonna send the invite I'm going to send yep, 10 o'clock on the 23rd. Yep. I'm going to send you something about Sonia from NC state. You're also going to send me a blurb that I can set, send to Inya. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks right. all you guys. It was great. Oliver, let's catch up in a little bit. I'll send you a note separately. Sure. And thanks for all the, the breathing uh, exercises You're were welcome. incredible. Thank you everybody. You're welcome. Welcome. All right. Yeah, Daniela, don't wait. Thank I want you. to do lunch in the next two weeks. So you don't okay. not do it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and Danielle, it. just thank you for doing this. Incredible. Thank you so much. Uh, you're, you're welcome. I, yeah, I, I believe it's the most healing modality that there is. Um, and I believe, yeah, like, I think that there's a lot of power. So thank you um, for allowing me to like take the chance and allowing me to play with that and 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 bring that as an experience to to that many people and the, and and i mean you know these athletes you know they don't have the social followings of serena williams or lebron That's james okay. or whatever but what they have is a real passion to make a difference to be part of the wave and so this really helped 
and maybe it is the I'm part of the wave. I am the wave. Maybe that's it. I am the wave. Remember, like Ooh, I'm, I'm just thinking I still that have I, I am, am circled on my whiteboard right here. Right, I am the wave that of could change. Be pretty interesting. I am the wave of change. Who are you? You know. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me, who are you? Bring it back. And where are there. you? And who yeah. are you? <laughs> oh man, uh, Oliver, you're going to be going back in the day with all of these references. Yeah. 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 Well, Oliver <laughs> likes old movies and stuff, so luckily he's probably heard some of this stuff already. All right. Is there a movie? I am the wave. Is there a movie? No, but we were talking about the Who and all these other older references. Okay. So all luckily, right. Oliver all right. watches enough old movies that he gets some of these pop references. Yeah, no, he has to. He has to. Get yeah. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> okay. Bye. Oh my gosh. Okay. Bye. All right, Have see a y'all. good day. Bye. Oh, and Lou, yeah. uh, let me know about like the video. Yeah, I will That's once. Uh, so I'll upload it today. Then I'll look through them, and then I'll give you some ideas. Um, I mean, some of the comments were just so good. Okay. Yeah, if you could timestamp sure. some of those, Lou, that'd be awesome. Yeah, it's yeah, just going to take sure. me a little while, but yes. No worries. Yeah. Okay. All right. Bye. Thank you.